Greetings and salutations. Quick shout out to the two Uber comrades on Patreon supporting my channel and this content. My partner, thank you, Rosa, and Independent Left News. Something I've been thinking about a little bit since this past uh, weekend, uh, because I on Sunday, yeah, it was Sunday, I attended this event. These different groups uh, were organizing to just show some solidarity with the people of Cuba. And, you know, calling for the Biden administration to end the economic embargo and the sanctions that make it, you know, very difficult for, uh, you know, Cuba and the people there to get the, you know, basic, you know, essentials that they need because of this economic warfare that the United States has been waging on this country for six plus decades. And, you know, Trump ratcheted up tensions, ratcheted up sanctions, while, you know, previously the Obama administration had started to somewhat normalize relations, um, unfortunately, Biden has more or less, you know, doubled down on that Trump strategy, unfortunately. Um, you know, so these these events are they happen every every last Sunday of the month um, in multiple cities across the U.S., across the world, I believe is what they said at this event. This is the first one I had been to. <clears throat> And something that this event kind of made me think of was the importance of building coalitions with people that you might not, you know, agree with on every issue or topic, or you might not be, you know, super ideologically aligned, uh, you know, in other areas. But it was really, really awesome to see all of these disparate groups come together because we shared this common cause, this common purpose that we wanted to let's see uh you know the u.s's hands needed to get off cuba this was a sign i brought well, actually my partner had made i brought it um but i ended up using one of the signs that the uh, psl people had there anyways it was just really cool to be around you know all these these different types of you know people coming from these different organizations so i had heard about this event because i saw the email from PSL, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, the, the Seattle branch was was going to be there. So that's how I, um, you know, heard about it. There's also the Socialist Workers Party, which is a uh, you know a Trotskyist uh, you know organization that I believe split from the Communist Party USA back in the early 1940s, something like that. So they had some folks there. The uh, the Socialist Worker Party they were selling there. Uh, it was a daily or weekly newspaper called The Militant. I also bought a book from them about uh, yeah, Cuba and these. It's like, I think it's called the Cuban Five, which sounds really interesting. So the PSL that PSL was there, the Socialist Workers Party was there, uh, Veterans for Peace was there. Um, also, this group, uh, Bridges of Love, was also there. Um, and their person, I believe it's Carlos uh, Lazo. I'm a, it could be, well, somebody was there from the Bridges of Love um, project, which was really cool. Uh, they were, you know, live streaming and interviewing people, asking people why, you know, we're there. Uh, let's see. Was that, I think those were the, the main groups that I remember, uh, Maybe one of them was also friends of Cuba, maybe. Um, but anyways, so it was cool to see those groups. You know, like I said, I don't agree with, you know, everything that any of those groups probably, you know, stand for or push for, that their mem you know, might be a little bit different ideologically aligned than their members. But it was just really cool to see these people come together for this common purpose of, you know, ending this economic warfare, this economic siege that the U.S. has been waging against this tiny island country, simply for the fact that they are socialists, that they're actually looking out for the well-being of the masses. I mean, they have universal health care. They have universal education. Two things we couldn't even get, especially the universal health care part in the United States during a pandemic and 
So obviously we can't have any type of, you know, successful socialist country so close to the United States that maybe people in the U.S. would start, uh, you know, demanding things like, you know, health care. So we don't have tens of thousands of people dying in the U.S. each year because they lack access to health care or people going bankrupt because of medical debt. Neither of those things happen in Cuba. Also, they more or less don't have any homelessness. I was also talking to somebody at this event who has traveled to Cuba extensively and is actually going on a caravan there to de- to deliver um, some much needed, you know, supplies, essentials to for the people of Cuba in November. And they were talking about how actually their kid had traveled with them previously, and they actually feel safer when they're in Cuba than they do in the United States, which frankly, that doesn't doesn't surprise me at all Um, and they're also organizing a caravan in july which hopefully fingers crossed i would be able to go on that because i think that would be a really really amazing uh, and eye-opening experience to see what uh, cuba is actually like you know in person talk to people of cuba i definitely need to learn uh some some spanish uh yeah because i don't know a whole lot at this point obviously that would be very helpful to be able to have at least a little bit of conversation uh you know with people there in spanish but anyways i just think it's really you know interesting that you know it's important to build build these these coalitions build these you know temporary alliances you might not again agree with everybody on every issue but everybody at this event was obviously you know there because they wanted this economic embargo they wanted you know, the sanctions to end, the blockade to end. So the, you know, people of Cuba would be able to figure out, uh, you know, what type of, uh, you know, country and society they want for themselves free of U.S., you know, intervention and interference, which again hurts the most vulnerable and marginalized people there. Um, So it's cool. Yeah, like I said, the Socialist Workers Party was there again. Like one of them was kind of throwing some shade at at Stalin at one point. So I definitely don't, you know, I have a more nuanced view of Stalin than these, this Trotskyite group does. The PSL was there, which is again, how I heard about the event. And I think they do pretty good work overall. Don't have as much maybe of a critique of them as I would, uh, you know, the socialist worker party, Um, veterans for peace, uh, you know, they, they were there. Um, And then the, you know, Bridges of Love, they were also there. Notice, noticeably absent, though, um, was the, you know, DSA. I would I would have thought if this event had been going on for a while that, you know, the local branch of the DSA would be highlighting it. And again, I think these events happen. Um, it was like maybe 14 cities across the U.S., something like that, and, and internationally as well. Like, um, I didn't see anybody from... DSA there. So what's what's going on with you, DSA? Get your you know local chapters out at this event. It's important to spread you know spread the message, right? Um, so that that was some. I obviously didn't expect you know any type of democratic Democrats, Democratic Party hacks to be there. So that wasn't surprising. You're obviously not going to see any uh, you know right wing. Uh, you know, conservatives there necessarily because they probably want to keep this economic embargo going. But DSA, um, you know, I just Googled DSA on on Cuba and they've, you know, released, you know, statements saying that the blockade, the embargo needs to stop, but they didn't have any presence there. Um, Hopefully that changes. Um, But again, I asked, I was like, yeah, it's, because I talked to somebody there, I think they're from the Socialist Workers Party, like, yeah, it's really awesome to see all this different, you know, groups here, uh, you know, out here advocating for an end to the sanctions, to the economic warfare, showing solidarity with the people of Cuba, um, you know, all the groups I've been listing, but what what's going on with the DSA? And they're like, well, you know, the leadership, now that Biden's in office, probably doesn't want to come out against Biden, um, and or you know, or the democratic machine, and um, perhaps that's true. But I would think at least the local branches would, um, you know, maybe buck that trend because it seems like 
you know, the rank and file of DSA is, you know, pretty good for the most part. So why would not, you know, the local Seattle branch or the other branches, you know, across the U.S. and in cities where these events are happening, why would they not be, um, you know, advocating for this, getting out there, advertising? Because again, Veterans for Peace, Socialist Workers Party, PSL, Bridges of Love Cuba, like DSA, get your shit together. You should be at these events. You should be encouraging your your members to to attend. It's important to you know raise the uh, the message, the visibility of of this movement because it is super important. And um, perhaps if Biden you know, sees these events growing in size, the movement getting bigger and bigger, then maybe he would start to normalize relations and ease the tensions that the U.S. is uh, currently and continuing to wage against um, Cuba. So I don't know, maybe that's um, wishful thinking to think that, I don't know, the, the DSA would do that, but I don't know. I have a little bit more faith again in the local branches of the DSA than I do on a national level. It seemed like on a national level, they're um, just completely, uh, you know, kind of bought and paid for by the Democratic Party. If not, you know, monetarily, like they want to keep their their status, their their connections, etc. So they don't want to overturn the apple cart and call out Biden on this. But I would expect. I would have expected some, you know, DSA presence at this. I didn't see that. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised by that. I don't know. Let me know down below. Just some, just some thoughts about building, you know, a, you know, a coalition when, you know, these different groups, these different people have, you know, a common and united cause. And in this case, it was, you know, ending the blockade on Cuba, ending the sanctions, showing solidarity with the Cuban people. And again, these events happen across the U.S. every last Sunday. Um, this was in the Seattle area, but you could probably find one in your area or maybe, um, you know, start start one yourself or maybe an organization that you're part of. You could bring it up because it's just super important, super important. So like the video if you like the video and let me know what you think down below, especially about the DSA aspect I was just talking about. Subscribe for more content. All part of the people. Peace. Much love.